So we came to see the um, Gemini 3200 today, and it looks pretty cool. We talked extensively with Keith, who did a lot of work on the boat. I don't know, uh, he didn't tell me how much he got the boat for, I didn't ask him. Also check this out because this is the biggest boat yard ever. And they're just all, I mean, this goes on. It's like, I don't know, how many acres would you say this is? It's unbelievable, but I don't know how many acres it is, but it's a lot. <laughs> There's like three boat yards like next to each other and they're just packed, packed with boats. We drove through this boat yard before and after our appointment and it was just amazing to see all the different kinds of boats in one place. You could just look at them all. It was pretty fascinating and we could have stayed there longer. So here is the Gemini. But uh, still looking good. I see a lot of side like something I can work with here. And they clean the bottom. What the hell did they break the bottom? Is it something we can work uh, they with? Just, they, they just use a we got two motors instead of one. Sounds kind of new. Yeah, you can get right in the water. Uh, yeah, they'll just knock off. So as long as you keep up yeah. with it, it's not, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, if you if you don't keep up with it, it, it can become a big deal. Yeah. Right. Um, but then the other tree store. Um, you're walking distance to, to restaurants and bars. The Fort Myers Yacht Basin. And they cater to, to liver. There's, a, there's a, quite a large liverboard community there. Um, so it's, it's your own sort of neighborhood right there. Hmm. What does the boat weigh? A 7,000 pound displacement. 7,000 so 7, pounds. On, so once you, uh, you, you know, it's going to be a little more than that once you, if you load it with a bunch yeah. of water and equipment and so yeah. forth. But yeah, yeah, it's very light for its size. 7,000 pounds for a 32 footer is, mm. you know, I, I've got friends who've got 32 foot model house that weigh 24,000 pounds. Yeah, so, wow, wow, um, heavy. Very, very different, yeah. It's light, you say it's light for, does it have uh, just, just a fiberglass? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's all relatively light fiberglass, you'll see. For example, I like to do that. Yeah. You can, you can, you can hear the bolt right here, what it's sitting on, right? Yeah. So, yeah. What do you call that? That's a bulkhead. Uh, That's uh, sort of a rim. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yep. yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. But most of the boat is just this kind of thing. It's a yeah. relatively thin. So it sounds, it sounds hollow because it's a relatively thin. Yeah. Interesting features. It, it, um, you know, it, 18 inches um, is all it needs. So Before yeah. I did the um, the gel coat, yeah, uh, all that work had really made the grain of the mahogany pop. Oh, sure. And it looks sure. spectacular. When oh, you glass right. It, it comes out beautiful. Yeah. If you, you know, if you know what I mean, I'm sure you do. Yeah. And uh, hmm. I would have left it like that. Yeah. The only thing <laughs> is, uh, there were. It wasn't, so I had to, so for example, over here, uh, for example, the leading edge of this, of this rudder was, yeah. um, was, was just eaten away and, and worn out because oh. the previous owner hadn't taken yeah. that good a care of it. Mm. Yeah. So I had to, I had to sort of rebuild this with, you know, fiberglass and everything. Oh, so, okay. Uh, Shape it, it up It wouldn't again. have looked as nice. You would have had like a really nice wood grain through here, but then you would have seen sort of the repairs. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. I just went with the gel coat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hmm. Hmm. People run aground out here. I oh yeah, so. very common, very common. In fact, I'd say that there are two kinds of sailors in this world. Those, yeah. are those who have run aground and those who are about to. Spiders. Hello, hello spider. Where are you, Peanut? Ahead, they yeah, there's a spider it's, too. Uh, in rough water. What do you think? How does this thing behave? Cool. 
hmm. blow up water compared to, let's say, a typical. It's different. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't move as much, obviously. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's that's pretty different is that if you if you uh, are sailing a uh, a um, a heavy monohull, um, it'll tend to, to it'll tend to sail through the waves, right? Crash through them. Right. Um, this one won't because it's because it's a very light boat. Yeah. Um, so sort of one of the tough things about this boat is sailing it in a in a sharp chop. You know, tend, like you'll have to bear off because that chop will just you know, you, you won't make much headway that way. So just because it's so light. I'll yeah. put this here. Sure, thanks. Actually, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Yeah, I had to cut the lock last time I was out here. I forgot the key and I had somebody showing up. And ah. was trying to get that home. So I just cut the lock. Yeah. It's a cheap, crappy master lock. Anyway, I, I was... Very surprised at how easy that lock cut. Yeah, <laughs> they're unless you pay a lot of money, they all cut like that. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's, it's like more a of a full key, honestly, twin in there. That's all it is. Hmm. Oh, let's uh, mm -hmm. open up some hatches here. Right. All the good stuff. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Storage. Mm -hmm. So now. How do you get to the bilges? Oh, so that's right over here. So you've got a bilge, one on each side. Yep. Um, right here. Yeah. There's switches over, over in the middle there. So we've got off, on, and auto. Yeah. Uh, and then oh. up here. This is what goes in. You put that in, it's got the O-ring, and then you tighten it down with that. One of the interesting things about these boards is that they're designed to uh, actually kick up and get out of the way if you run aground. Now, there's a vent right here for the dagger boards. Oh. Um, now, sort of, you'll, see, you'll see in sort of modern boats, right? Uh, yeah. Anything on the showroom with a dagger board that this will actually, they'll have a hose that vents this out. Mm -hmm. out the hull. You could right. install that, but like I said, I've never ever seen water come up here. It's just yeah. not, not worth the effort. Right. You know? Right. So, mm -hmm. but when you're sort of sitting here. Doesn't this compartment have a drain? Uh, this, I, sort of, yeah. I mean, not in particular, not let, that you can see, but this will eventually drain into the bilge, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, but it just doesn't have a, something that looks like a drain. It's just, it's designed to where it'll flow down to the build yeah yeah so. yeah <clears throat> yeah okay hmm. yeah hmm. and this is just taped up to keep the critters out mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. your dagger boards are operated using this so what you do is well, this is an interesting that this is essentially just uh a socket with a mm. yeah. with a bar welded on yeah. it but yeah. um so you've got you're not there um and and this is your handle now when you're out of the water um the dagger board is going to be heavy so you'll have to hold it up mm. uh in order to prevent it from crashing to the ground when you're in the water it'll be the opposite you'll want to actually pull it down but basically what i'll do over here, is loosen this up and then i can just lower the dagger board am i going the wrong way oh it must already be down what's going on here Oh, there we go. There it's it stuck. goes. Yeah. It's been a while since I. So you can see how heavy it is when it's out of water. Yeah. 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 
but you can hear it like you can hear it up to the ground so yeah. i'll just leave that down so you can take a look at what that looks like yeah cool yeah. So i designed and 3d printed a new handle with a thumb Hey. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, much, much better than that little seat. That is yes. so cool. But uh, mm. one of the things I like about this fridge yeah. is that it's actually a freezer, not a fridge. Yeah. A couple of benefits. To oh, the whole thing is a freezer? freezer? Yes. Nice. Now, I've got it turned way down so that it's a fridge. Yeah. So you can turn that up. Now, a couple of benefits to it, to it being a freezer. One, it's insulated better. So uh, it's going to yeah. use less of your house bank right. uh, to keep it cool. Uh, the other is that this cold plate goes all the way around and all the way down. Right. So you have even temperatures rather than that little BS little box right. that these refrigerators have. Oh, yeah, have, then you have to like chisel it out. Nothing yeah. fits in there. It you chisel it around, everything. it holds what? Like a couple of hot pockets and yeah. that's it. That's it. Uh, the rest of your fridge isn't, isn't cold enough while, while this thing's freezing over. So right. this is a much, much better fridge um, and it's great. It's brand new. <laughs> so, so this is your 120 AC. So this yeah. is this is shore power. The only time you really need to, to mess with this stuff is when you're on shore power. Right. Um, so, for example, battery charger. Right. When you plug into shore power, you want to use that battery charger to top off your batteries. Right. Uh, you turn this on. You fire that up. Yeah. And that turns on your charger. Now you charge it. Hot water heater, same thing. Right. It's a 120 volt hot water heater, which, by the way, I just I used for the first two months, and then it's like this is Florida. I don't really need hot water, <laughs> so I stopped using it. But um. And then you've got, this is mislabeled. This is refrigerator, but really it's, it's for the AC. Yeah. Um, and then you've got your, your outlets, starboard and port, right? So um, that's your typical, just your regular 120 volt outlets. Yeah, um, right. That turns these on. And then uh, the refrigerator, if you wanted to run the refrigerator off 120, uh, you turn the starboard outlets on and you switch this to number two. Yeah. And that's 120. Now you'd be powering up the refrigerator with 120. If you go with 12, see that's 12. Yeah. So it just turned on. Right. And you can hear it kick on. Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's running off the batteries now. Right. Um, this little doodad um, is some little, uh, an extra little feature I installed. What that is, is it's reporting. Basically, I have a temperature sensor on the coils out back of that refrigerator mm. and uh, a series of fans in here that kick on when this reaches a certain temperature. So 82 is what it's set at. Right now the, the coils are at 92, so the fan's on, you can feel it um, venting air. And what that does is just, there's no reason to run the fans if the coils aren't hot. Um, so it's a little added uh, efficiency. Yeah. So that's what that doodad does. Mm. Um, so air just comes up through here and then is vented out here to cool that refrigerator off. Right, right. Interesting. Video anomalies. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah, refresh rate, yep. That's cool. Yeah. They're, or like changing, let's say, 20 times a second. Mm -hmm. And so they match up once in a while and then they mm -hmm. don't sometimes. And so you're getting that flash because that's when they're interacting with each other. Mm. Refresh rate. Very interesting. Interaction. Very so good. when you <laughs> go on shore power, is there anything you have to do with the DC panel? No, what you do with a DC panel um, is, uh, depending on whether you're leaving the boat or, or whatever. So typically what I would do um, when I'm leaving the boat for, let's say, I'm not going to be on the boat for the weekend. You know, you want to make sure you turn off water pressure. That's your, yeah. that's your, uh, pump. your water pump yeah. over here. Because, yeah. because, and the point behind that is, uh, if you walk away from the boat and for some reason your water system springs sure. a leak, yeah. your pump's going to pump all that into the boat. Yeah. Which just creates a mess. So why oh, leave yeah. that on? Right. Yeah. Uh, fans and lights. Anchor light is just the light at the top of the mast. Yep. You're, you're required by law to use that when you're yeah. at anchor. Yep. Uh, actually, sorry, mast headlight is, is the top of the mast. Um, so this is all just, you know, your nav lights and so forth. Then mm -hmm. over here, you've got propane. Uh, I'll turn that on and show you that. Radar, that's this. You've got a radar on the boat. Right. Um, and then electronics, all autopilots and instruments, that's all your helm stuff. Mm. Um, so we'll flip on the electronics and I'll show you that in a little while as well. Uh, so what this is, is essentially this is a sensor that is, is trying to see if there's propane in the air. Mm. Uh, and if it, if it does, it'll shut off the valve for the propane for the stove, right? Mm. So right now the stove won't light because it's off. So what you do is you turn it on and then you can light the stove. Mm. So this is sort of a, an extra safety mechanism. The interesting thing is that this isn't strictly needed because uh, marine stoves are built in. This little thing is a thermistor. Right. Uh, what it does is it gets hot. 
And this valve for this propane burner uh, won't stay on until this thermistor gets hot. Mm. So what happens is if you get a big enough wind to blow that out, mm. it'll pretty quickly cool off and then kill the, the propane right. so you're not pumping propane into your cabin. How many batteries do you have? It's got two 125 amp hour 12 volt EGM batteries. Yeah. And they're basically new. Yeah. Um, and I've also installed uh, a brand new solar charge controller. Mm. So that's the blue thing behind you here. Yeah. And the cool thing about that is it comes with an app that tells you what all kinds of stuff about what your batteries are. Uh, completely okay. off you can hear the fan goes off so this is marked engine house and then both okay. so this connects the batteries to all of the house there are three different ways of, of charging those batteries hmm. so that's the dc that's like that's how you turn your dc on uh, so yeah. um pretty cool it comes with a little app so this connects via bluetooth so i can t it tells you everything about what's going on with your batteries oh, uh, my solar cool. panels are making 59 volts right now uh, the, the battery is currently at 13.56. So uh, that tells you everything about the uh, battery. what batteries are doing. Uh, and nice. this thing works even if everything's nice. off. Yeah, this is a very nice little unit. Uh, and that's one of the things I most recently upgraded. So, mm. And that is going in there. Well, sort of. So it's going to show you what it'll actually say. So you can see voltage is 58. Yeah. But current uh, being... Um, uh, pumped out of the solar panels is only 0 0.3. Yeah. The reason for that is because the batteries are fully charged. There's, there's no no more current that it can take. It can't take any um, more And charge. so there's nothing, those solar panels are essentially doing nothing right now. Mm. Um, the battery bank's voltage is, is 13.5 right now, which is which is a maximum, right? Yeah. Um, now, if you were to cover those solar panels with a blanket and wait maybe an hour or two, you'll see these batteries float down to 13.2, yeah. 13.1, yeah. something like that. That's fully, fully charged. charged. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, so that's a charged. normal fully charged battery. Now, with these batteries, you, you really don't want to take them down below about 12 and a, uh, about 11 and a half. Um, about 11 and a half, 11.6 is about half charge. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is because with an AGM battery, if you take them lower than that, you um, you start to eat into their uh, their their lifetime. We got our anchor locker. In here we have a sweaty anchor. This is a sweaty anchor. The world's best anchor. Made in Belgium. One, two, three. And a little one. Four anchors. Yeah. It's a it's a foam core fiberglass. Yeah. So you you can see just a little sliver of it. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm sure yeah. I've got a picture somewhere of the boat in a boat yard up, up much higher. So with you can the see a better down. picture of what the board looks like. I can try and find that, it. That uh, goes down four feet, did you say? Uh, it'll go down such that your draft is four feet. So it'll be, you know, from here to that bottom of that board will be about 4.5. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, every Gemini that you look at will have these little cracks. These are only cosmetic. These aren't structural. Right. Uh, what's happening is the gel coat is very stiff. Right. And this boat is very light and flexible. Uh, and so you can you can go look at a two-year-old Gemini, brand new Gemini, and right. it'll have cracks like this. That's interesting. And so so it flexes a little bit, like, you know, right. not enough for you to notice it doing right, it, but right, enough right. for the gel coat to eventually uh, crack on you like that. Right. Um, but I've, I've consulted many, many, many owners and experts and so forth, and every single one of them says it's only cosmetic. Tell me about this on the mast, right? You have... Uh, the fore stay and the back stay, uh -huh. and then you have this one that comes up to the middle, right? And it it locks yeah, that's down here. Yeah, the baby here. stay with the 
like this without a baby stick. Mm -hmm. If you get into the right kind of a dusty, windy kind of condition, yeah. you'll get what's called mass pumping, which is the, the mass will kind of shimmy a little bit. Mm. Yeah. And all that baby stick is designed to do is put enough tension on the middle of that to mass. To stop it from shimmying. To, to, to quit that pumping. Okay. But I built the system and I finally got it how I wanted it and it looks like it belongs and everything. Um, now, I didn't label any of the switches because I thought it looked a little nicer without the labels. Obviously, right. I'd have to provide some labels or something when I sell the boat. Right. Um, Top of deck, what's that? Just hitting but, all the uh, buttons. I can show you a little bit of- Trying to figure I out what it- I turned on some of the electronics. So let me, I'll show you how I run the system and then some of the other things you can do instead. Okay. So the system is- um, Yeah, I took this window down. I was like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. This actually comes down as well. Oh, nice. Uh, there's a pin right here, and then this comes down. So if you're sealing, you can put um, it down. You know, you, you can get a, get that open and get a better view. Yeah, it's those. nice. Um, and some wind, wind in your face. Uh, I turn on a electronics. Um, when you turn on electronics, what that does, it turns on a ship computer, which is a little, a small computer. And what I've done is I've designed the system so that all the electronic devices uh, send their information to the ship computer, and then. Um, it will resend that 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 out on on tablets. So this is your navigation. And these are dead. Your... These are dedicated tablets to these things. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is now your instruments. Um, mm -hmm. So what you do is, so if I turn this on, that'll be your lights here. I put some nice oh, yeah. party lights. You can make this any color you want. That's, That's actually in this system here. So if I go back home and go to here. I can change it to, let's say, what is it now, purple? Sorry, right change it to blue. It didn't quite work yet, so it's still connecting. Oh, nice. So, back out of that again and re huh. reconnect. There we go. Now it'll work. Open. Blue. So they turn blue. Yeah. Um, and you just like scroll through the oh, yeah. color palette? Green. Oh, yeah. That's great. Whatever you want, red. That's fun. So for example, one of the things I did, these colors look black, right? Mm -hmm. They're actually a, uh, a dim red and a very dim red, mm, right? So for night. When, you're, when you're actually motoring or whatever at night, mm -hmm. you can click on this and you get like your red mm. or, or if you want just a sliver of light, just mm. so you can kind of illuminate things, you go with mm -hmm. the 1% and so you can see it's very, very dim. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, huh. I like this one just because it's a nice kind of a party color. But um, very cool. going back here, this is... Uh, your nav. This is a this is just nav I used, but you could you could get like um something more ordinary like um iNavX or something like that. Whatever right. whatever you like. What are like the monthly charges on these? Oh uh, there isn't any. There is there, it's there just isn't. you get it. So and you're this in. is all my own my own system that I mm. that I designed myself. So okay. um these are both connected to the Wi Fi. This the ship makes its own Wi Fi and these automatically connect to it. Um hmm. and then so this turns on the network for uh the instruments so this it's called nmea if you want to if you want to look into what that is um and then this is your actual instruments here um and, and this is on yeah up is on okay um and what do, happen, do these light up no no i didn't want them lighting up because they're super bright yeah you're like ah, um, i can't see anything and, yeah at night yeah. it's a problem so i i didn't wire in the lighting um <laughs> and then over here this is your power so basically i've designed this so you can actually connect your, I'll just connect one of them, but oh, you connect right. your tablets yep. um, and then you don't have to worry about, you know, it's, it's actually powered by the system at that point. So yep. you don't have to worry about it dying on you. Um, hmm. And so this will show you like your wind and, and unfortunately we don't have wind today. We have no wind. <laughs> it's you're, brutal. We're not going to see it actually move today. If you want to climb up the mast and give it a, give it a spin, <laughs> we can take a look. But um, this will show you all, you know, sort of all the, the main stuff. And Very you've got, cool. This is your tri-data. That's the through hole up front that oh, I'm right, showing you. Right, um, This also won't show you much. It'll just show you nothing because, so that's over here. If you that's on. the autopilot. There is the, the new throttles. It's pretty cool. Autopilot really should be relabeled to Raymarine because it does the autopilot and the tri-data, right? Okay. So this is your autopilot. This is your tri data. So it'll say nothing for depth and speed because we're we're not actually in water. Yeah. Um, and then you know your autopilot. You engage the autopilot belt by turning this lever here, and that locks it to the actual motor. So now, for example, 
See. Then you just set your heading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what you'd actually do. Oh, um, that's interesting. So it's on right now because I clicked on auto, right? So now it's on auto. It's set to 250, 265 degrees magnetic, right? Right. So if I wanted to go to uh, 245, I can hit 10 twice, right? And now it's trying to, it's trying to actually get us there. And it's going to keep, because we're not actually moving, so it's going to keep trying. Right. Right, but I can just switch it to back to standby, turn it back off. So that's how that system works. And, then and where do you turn actually, it on and off? Just here? There's a lever back here that you know, locks down. Interestingly enough, I use this even when I'm not using autopilot. Like if I'm sailing the boat, I want to walk away for a second. I'll just reach down here and lock it because it will hold the you on course. Yeah. I know the wheel's not going to move now. Yeah, yeah, that's um, nice. So a useful little little thing even when you're not using autopilot. That's very useful. Um, so that's the system th that I've built. Uh, it also has you know, a more traditional Garmin, um, if that's your jam, um, right. and that, and that wires in here. I've honestly, I don't even have a place to mount it because I never use it. That's my, again, my backup. backup. I'm big about redundancy, right? redundant engines, redundant electronics, Just redundant in case. everything. Cause I, I plan on cruising the Caribbean single hand. So right. I wanted all that redundancy. So, right. um, but this guy has its own depth sounder on the back as well. Um, oh, right. And I also, I believe on this boat, I'd have to double check the inventory, but I believe there's also a spare um, GPS antenna. Mm. So if you, if something happened, I don't know, some sort of like electrical storm or something, let's say blows out all your electronics. Oh, right. Hit by lightning. Yeah. That happens a lot around here. Well, one, what you can do at that point is plug in your Garmin, right. assuming your batteries aren't blown up, but, you know, plug in your Garmin literally pull a gps antenna out of your storage and hand wire it um and still have that uh if you need it but then again you've also got probably like navionics on your phone yeah. or on, your, on your ipad on phone or something like that point. so you've got redundancy after redundancy at that point so right. yeah that's like a dinosaur the garmin now. yeah everyone yeah. uses their phone exactly or like an iPad, it would be great or to Or like this. The, the yeah, one dedicated. thing I might do is replace this with an iPad with with, with Navionics on it, you know, something like that, because, right. um, you know, Navionics provides really nice charts, so. Right. Um, but that's that's the system that I that I built. That's how I run it. Nice. Um, you've got, so. Where would you, if you were going to put a water maker in here, where would you put it? I, I would maybe. probably put it underneath, like, sort of, where the hot water tank is, mm -hmm. um, potentially, mm -hmm. uh, and that would give you um, the ability to keep it. It's either that or the other option would be to try to find um, a place to install it, maybe here. In there somewhere. Um, because what you'd want to do is you'd want to have it filling your fresh water tank, so right. having it close to the tank is, is um, ideal. So. Um, yeah, I'm considering I've thought about that. it for a while. It was one of the things I, I would like as well. Yeah. Uh, they're crazy expensive. And right? How much are they? About Out. two grand. Two grand, yeah, that's a lot. So you get to the point, look, the conclusion I came to um, is that it'd be a nice to have thing, but it's not something that you sh need or should want in order to start. Right. Like, get out there. Confirm that it's something that you need before right. you go and dump two thousand dollars in something that's just a nice to have. Right. So that's the that's the conclusion I finally came to, and it's why I don't have one. Right. And, um, a factory design. This right here. Oh, there. That's where the mast is. Hmm. Good to know. Now, if you wanted to make them turn with the rudders, yeah. you just take this line, run it through this block, yes. and then back here. Yes. And once you do that on each side, right. then the motors are connected to the then rudders. Then these will steer the motors. Then those will steer the motors, yeah. Yeah. Which and these are steered by here. Right. Got it. There's right. just not a lot of reason to do that um, because, you know, you, you can turn the boat so easily by putting one in forward and one in reverse. Yes. But that if you're in, the, in that Close kind of low-speed condition yeah. where your rudders aren't going to do Swing the job, bow right around. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's a game-changer, really. Now, this mm. is your other transom-mounted yeah. sounder, yeah. by the way. Oh, right. Yeah, depth finder, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
that's interesting how they uh yeah that's not my design i don't put it on it. uh instead of uh well here's what's good about it okay yeah i mean you can see these are sealed up yeah uh but they're also above the water line yes so yeah. I, rather than bolt this below the water line through like, the hole i don't yeah. like the idea of adding yeah. additional holes particularly had, below water line i like it like that yeah nice your build pump here so this is your build pump okay uh, for this side for this side there's an identical one there's on the other side one on the other side uh and then forward what is by that? the way this is an old uh raw water foot pump so what you do is oh it's, the it's, build it's not is... it's not hooked up so well you're supposed to be able to turn this in with your foot and it'll pop up and then you can pump it but for some reason it's right. it's just an old relic and then over here this is where your, your through hole is. So this is the plug. Oh, I see. Um, and and that's this is the... the actual instrument. So you'll see that this is your actual uh, pinwheel. And so what you want to do is just make sure that you install this thing with that arrow facing forward like that. That way your pinwheel works correctly. Got right? it. Um, so you just pull this out, pop this in. You've got an O-ring here. Mm -hmm. um, and then you screw that down. What I would do is... Um, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to just uh, shove a, a bunch of Vaseline in there just to keep that nice and, you know, plush and lubricated. Right. Um, if it looks like it's, you know, I would, Crack it's been it. sitting for a while, so I'd probably do it before installing it at this point. But um, well, that's basically it. You just pop that out and pop this in um, when you're ready to sail. And this is the old one. I don't know why I didn't remove it. I guess I forgot to. But this is the old one. I, I, oh, yeah. I messed with that for quite some time to, to try to replace it, uh, to try to get it working. And... Um, you know, just just couldn't, and so I replaced it with this new one. Just got a new one, yeah. So, that's cool. And this is this is an old sounder. This doesn't go through the hull. This this is just sits on the hull. Oh. Okay. Um, and it, but it's designed to 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 work through the hull. Um, but it but again, you know, it's it's never worked, and it's just been there, and there's no reason to really tear up the hull removing it. it. So it just it. stays there. Yep. So. Hmm. Cool. Got it. <clears throat> You could have somebody survey this boat, and I'd, I'd be legitimately surprised if they find anything wrong with this boat that's not simply cosmetic. Right. Um, yeah. Because I've been through absolutely everything on this boat. It's a very cool boat. Oh, fancy. So that's what you need right there. A little... You think that's all I need? Yeah. Just that? Yeah. I can fit what I own on there. Yeah. Just pop it in a backpack. Yeah. Did I leave that here? Yeah, it was sitting there. Want it? I'll give it to you. That's mine. Where did it come from? Right there. Huh. That's yours? Yeah. You found it. Again. We didn't know you were walking. Look at that. 